All right, so welcome back to this fourth part. So we covered the general theory, we covered how we handle the data in memory in actual code. Then we went over how we, we do uh, the Gaussian elimination, right? So next, in order to solve the system, we just have to back substitute. So let's actually write this matrix slightly nicer. All right. 0, 5, 6, 0, 9, right? And we have the we have the x here, which is the variable vector. Sorry, it should be no, that should be fine. And then here we have the b vector. So let's say it's just again is 2, 1, 2, right? So back substitution, it works this way. So First, you work from the back, right? From the end of the matrix. So this is row zero, row one, and row two. So we're going to loop from row two to row zero, working our way up, right? If we expand row three, sorry, row two, what we get is nine times z, because let's say that's like that, right? So our our variable vector is going to be x, y, z, right? Hopefully the, the fan noise, I'm not making too much. I'm not going too crazy because my surface likes to run hot in one screen record, but sorry about that. So we're saying we expand that, we get 9z equal to 2. So we, we divide by 9 and we get z. And we are going to substitute this value in the solution vector. So this is going to be equal to 2, 9, 2 over 9, right? So that's our the value of z, and we are golden. We found the first one, then we expand the second one, so r1 is equal to 5y plus 6z equal to 1. But we already know the value of 6z, so of z, so we are going to get 6 times 2, 9 equal to 1. Oops. So now simple algebraic manipulation will give us the result. We multiply 6 to 9, then we bring it on the other side and divide by 5. Alright? So that's the gen general solution. So let's try to actually see what's the pattern in our code. So first, sorry, first, um, the first row is actually the the first row we're going to process is actually the hardest to understand because the pattern is slightly different. So we're going to start from row one. Right, so we are in row one. What we need to do is so we are walking diagonally upwards, right? So what we're going to do we are going from the left element, sorry, the right element of the diagonal element, right? All the way to the end of the matrix, right? So in this case, let's say that the 5 is the index j, you are going to loop from j plus 1 all the way to the number of columns we have, right? So we're going to proceed that way. Because basically what we want to do is substitute the value we find in the previous row and multiply, right? And where do you find, right, the value for the variable? So let's reason about that. So in this case, j is equal to 1. So it means that the value on the right, the first value on the right, which actually was, sorry, I deleted that, is going to be one index more so it was found in the in the row below so the index was j plus one right so where where is going to where did we store the value we found in the j plus one row well we store it in the solution vector oops no i don't want the help at the index j plus one didn't we? So what we're going to do is, again, let's make some clean. We are going to loop from, so loop, 
this pseudocode. So j from j plus 1 to number of columns. And what we do, we grab, uh, so let's say, the current row, we grab the element j plus 1, right, which is going to be, for example, this one, and we multiply it by b j plus 1, right, which is going to be this one, right, because that's the value of z, and as we say, we said before, 6z is the value, so we want to plug the values by of z. I hope it makes sense. Oops, so it's, uh, no, I just want to delete it. Thank you. All right. So we multiply that, and then if you remember, we need to bring that on the other side. So we are going to subtract that. So the value we just found, we are going to subtract that to the value of b the current index which is bj and please don't make jokes about that I just realized what b index j might sound like but anyway so we're going to grab the index j of b and subtract the value we just computed which basically we just back substitute so this is oops back substitute z all right and let's quickly cover what happened in the next row so we walk one row above so now j is equal to zero all right so again we start looping the columns from j plus one so it's going to be one to the number of columns, which is going to be three. So now here I did it all with variables. Now I'm going to do it slightly more explicit to be more clear. So we grab the first, we grab the element. So current row, we grab the element, um, which is j's plus one, which we are looping. So let's say this is the index i. So we are grab, we grab i, which is which is basically j plus 1, but we call it i, we again, we multiply by uh, b i, right? And, and then we are going to subtract this. So let's expand that with numbers. So we have, again, the j element of b, again, is is 2. So we are going to get 2. Oops. Uh -huh. Oh, I mean, sorry. Is 2 minus. Let's expand that again. So it's 2 times this element. Right? It's times 2. So it's times 1. And then we, we do the next row. And which is going to be minus 3 times 2 ninth. Alright? And but that's not enough, right? That's just the subtraction. So let's say that that is equal to beta, like it's a constant, right? So we compute the value, we know what that is. No, that's not 2 minus 9, it's 2 ninth, right? Now, this value needs to be divided by the current value we have in the diagonal. So, our final B0 is going to be equal to beta, so the number we computed by crawling the columns, divided by current row 0. Alright, so I hope it makes sense. I'm running out of time. I cannot make video longer than 10 minutes. So this is the theory. Let me know if it was clear enough. That's the back substitution in the next video, which should be the final one of the of this the Gaussian elimination. We are going to show how that behaves in code. So all the theory put into code. Alright, see you in the next one, guys.